Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's really fast video, I'm going to do an updated video on an old video I did. These are classic dinner rolls. Another name for them are blender rolls. What I have here is a little bit over three cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm gonna add in one cup of warm water. This is 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've actually measured the temperature of the water. I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of granulated white sugar. And for this recipe, you're gonna see on screen all of these ingredients measured out exactly in grams. And then I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of instant dried yeast, right in there. And I'm gonna get this onto my machine. This little KitchenAid is about 30 years old and it really works nicely still, even though it's so old. And I just wanna start mixing this around. I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And that's 60 grams, by the way. And then I'm gonna add in one egg, and I always use large eggs in all of my recipes. Get that mixing. This is a really super easy recipe, but it yields an amazing dinner roll. And then I'm gonna add in my last ingredient, which is a quarter teaspoon of salt. Right in there. And at this point, I'm gonna let my mixer go for a good six to seven minutes. So here we are, this is about seven minutes later. My dough looks amazing. So I'm just gonna bring it out. We'll move our KitchenAid mixer out of the way. And I'll show you how nice this dough is. Just get in there. Get it right off of our little dough hook. This is the old style dough hook. This is called the C. And I do have a video illustrating the differences between the spiral and the old style C hook like this. But you can see it still does a nice dough. KitchenAid used this style for many, many years before they switched over to the new spiral. I'm just gonna grab it with my hands. And just get it all out. You don't want to have a super dry dough. If you do, it won't rise as well. So at this point, we want to keep our dough nice and moist. You can use a brand new bowl, but what I do all the time when I'm not filming, I'll just take my original bowl, I'm just going to grab a little bit of spray and I'm going to spray that in there, a little bit of oil. So if you don't have cooking spray, just take a little bit of oil and just oil it. You can use your hands or a little paper towel or a little brush. So that is oiled. Just grab my bench scraper that'll just make it a little bit easier. You can see how nice this dough is. Really nice dough. So I'm just going to get that into a nice ball. And then, right into the bottom. And now I just want to spray that on the top, just to keep it moist. And there we have it. So let's take a beginning look to see what it looks like. And now I'm gonna cover it, and I just want to leave it there for about an hour. I just want it to get larger in size. So I'm gonna let that start growing and then I'll come back in a little while. So this is about 45 minutes later and I'm just gonna grab my nice dough. I'm gonna bring it out and you can see that it's kind of opened up. It's a little bit less firm. There is a lot of energy and activity going on there with the yeast. And at this point, I'm just gonna grab my little bench cutter and I just want to cut all of these 
into little balls. So if you don't have a little bench scraper like this, you can just use a knife. You just want to try to get them into equal balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a nine inch square pan here and I've just oiled it a little bit. And then I'm going to take each one of these and I'm going to just start placing them into the middle. So just bring them up, make little balls, and just start placing them. I start in the middle. You can start on the side if you wish. So basically the same technique as if you were making a little dough ball for pizza. If you like pizza, I have lots of recipes on my channel here. And if you want to be really accurate, you can get out your scale and you can weigh out each ball and then just take, take and add to each ball until you get equal you know ball sizes and weights that's good and then I'm just gonna spray the top again to keep all of the dough balls moist so there we have it so I've just sprayed these so they're nice and moist and then again, my little tea towel, and I just want to let these sit and rest for at least a half an hour. So I'll do that, and then I'll come back in a little bit. So this is about 45 minutes later, and we are ready to go. You can see that they've blown up a little bit. I've just taken an egg and just mixed it with a fork, and now I'm just going to get this all over the top. This is going to give it a really nice brown appearance. Now this is optional, but it does make your final product look a lot nicer. So my oven is going right now, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to bake these about 20 minutes. Oh, that looks nice. go. And now I'm going to pop these into my oven and I'll come back when they're baked. So here we go, right out of the oven, exactly 25 minutes. At the 20 minute mark I wasn't too happy with the browning on top, so an extra five minutes and to me these look really really good. At this moment they're extremely hot, so I'm going to let them cool down and I'll come back and show you the final product in a little while. Now that my dinner rolls have completely cooled, let's just get them right out of the pan. And you can see that they don't stick at all, they just come right out. I'll flip it over so you can see the bottom, how nice that is. And there we have it. These smell amazing. I wish you could be here to smell this with me. So of course we're going to just take one of these off. And you can see right away how nice these are. I'll just break right into it. Look at this. Oh, mm, look at that. Mm. All I can say is these are amazing. Anytime I have spaghetti, I make these and there are none left over. Put a little butter on one of these, you are good to go. A really, really super, super easy recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. If you're on Facebook, you can check me out at facebook.com slash bake like a pro. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time. If you're lucky enough to still be watching, then you're getting this little bonus video. I forgot to zoom in before, so I'm doing it now. Look at that. I hope you try these out. You're going to make these once and you're going to be making them all the time. So that's it. Thanks for watching.